Hey guys, this is going to be a quick tutorial on sending fiber mesh to Maya. So in ZBrush you might have something that looks like this, which is cool, but if you're trying to render in Maya, this isn't very useful to you. So in order to get it over there, you're going to want to, uh, first of all, adjust the previous settings and this fiber mesh dropdown. Because if you send this main curve to Maya, it's just going to bog down your scene. So we'll use in here to try to recreate this look. So I'm just going to turn the previous settings way down until I get something like this. And I think that that is enough curves for me to work with. Maybe I'll just do a little tiny bit more so I get more of these curves here. I think that's good right there. Okay, so now that we have that ready, we can export our curves. And when you're exporting it, you want to make sure that you're exporting as Maya ASCII because for some reason the OBJ format does not work well with curves when exporting from ZBrush. So I'm just going to call this Hair Curves. Save it. And we'll switch to Maya. I have a scene set up here already. So I'm going to import our curves. And there they are right there. Now if you're working with multiple fiber mesh systems, you're going to want to set a prefix to these fibers. So when you uh, set up your in here, you won't have any conflicts. So let's just select the group. I just press up on my keyboard to select the group. And I'm just going to cut this hair out of the name there. Go to modify prefix hierarchy names and just paste that in there. So now all of our fibers are called hair underscore fiber whatever number. And if we didn't do this, there would be uh, multiple fiber 1209s, for instance, and uh, it wouldn't work within here. So that's just if you're working with multiple systems. So now that we have our curves in here and renamed, we can create a hair system. So I'm just going to create a poly cube. Get to my uh, end hair menu and create hair on this end cube. So I'll just do U count one, V count one. And we're going to want to create a new hair system. All these options don't really matter as long as you have paint effects set up and new hair system set up. So now we just get one little hair poking out with this cube. And we can get rid of the cube. We can get rid of this falc that I created. And now we're left with our hair system and our PFX hair. So now we're just going to select our curves, go to in here, assign hair system, and our new hair system here. And this will take a while because there's a lot of curves in there. So just let your uh, Maya think, and it will eventually assign the hair system. There we go. So at this point I like to just hide the curves, we don't want to see them anymore. Same with these output curves that the system creates. And I'm just going to group this, keep everything clean. And now we can start adjusting our hair system. So right now it's looking very uh, thin. So we'll come to our clump and hair shape and just start adjusting this. 
Let's start with maybe 50. That's not bad. We could probably use a little bit more. But we'll start with that. So now it's looking very uniform though. And it doesn't look like hair. So we can adjust a lot of these parameters to help fix that. Clump shape is very important to get a good look with your hair. Point 0.3 was actually pretty good. Maybe point 0.4. There we go. Okay. Um, clump with scale. You can play around with this. Um, clump interpolation down here was very useful. It basically interpolates each hair to offset it from the original spline. So that gives us a lot of variation. Also thinning is very useful too. I like to say around 0.25 or 0.5. That looks a lot more natural. And uh, one of the last things that I'll change is under the displacements, we can add some noise, which really helps uh, offset the hairs to make them a little bit more natural. It just kind of gets them some, some scraggle, I guess you could call it. So that's looking okay. It doesn't look exactly like our uh, ZBrush hair system, but it's pretty close. It looks a lot more uniform, which is okay. Um, at this point, we could add another hair system for secondary strands, and then even a third hair system for uh, flyaway hairs. But uh, this is a pretty good spot. So let's just do test render and see what we get. I'm just using Arnold, but you can use whatever renderer you like. And uh, I forgot to select override hair so it uses the Arnold shader So of course there are some adjustments that I could make within my hair system, but uh, I get some pretty clean results. Maybe I could use less noise. But uh, I'm fairly happy with the result. Let's just let it finish so you can see how it looks in the render. And that clump interpolation really helps with stuff like this. You get these little variations coming out of the clumps. Makes it look a lot more natural. And there we have it. So thanks for watching. And for the next tutorial, I'll probably do a fiber mesh creation.
tutorial so you could get something like this. So I will see you next time.